so this is our example problem. We have here a square sheet. The outer part here, which is in light gray, has conductivity of sigma equals one. The inner part has conductivity sig sigma equals one half. Um, we also have two point currents in here. Um, this one is minus one amp, this is plus one amp, and we have ground in here. So basically, the question is, if we divide the sheet into 16 squares, what is the potential in each square? So this is our sheet divided. We can see that everything pretty much um, suits each one of the squares. So like the plus here pertains to this square, the minus goes in here, the ground in here. So this is a good way to divide this problem. Now, we can potentially do this as shown before. We can solve for each one of the squares here. We will have um, a phi vector that the length of it is 16 for each one of the squares. The S matrix is gonna be 16 by 16. That's gonna be a lot, basically. When we have a problem like this, we wanna make sure that maybe there is a way to make it easier for us. Here, for example, we can take, we can look at some physical assumptions um, or conclusions that we can make uh, by just knowing how electricity works. So when we have two point currents in here, we basically can draw a line that is an equipotential line. So basically, this line in the middle would have potential equals zero. It just so happens. So we're going to write it in here. Basically, we're going to say that each one of these squares um, equals zero. Obviously, in the real world, it in the real world, it's only going to be the one line here in the middle, but since we are discretizing the problem, we work with squares, so we're going to say the entire square has a potential of zero. Um, now, I know that the problem also says um, in my textbook that there is another line of symmetry that goes in here, and that means that the values on this side will be equal to this, but I personally, if I were to see this in a test, I don't know that. I don't know how the physics behind it work that well. So let's just pretend that we don't know that. Um, let's pretend that all we know is that there is zeros in here. And since it's like an equipotential line, um, the potentials in this, basically this triangle, are the opposite of this. So with whatever we have here, the mirror image of it, negative, is shown in here. So basically we have here six six potentials that we have to solve for here we have phi a minus phi a okay great so we can see it now i just want to eliminate these since it's just too much too much noise um now we're gonna solve this problem this way so um we're going to take a look again at the equation that we're solving for. Now we need to remember that we're trying to build a an S matrix that will be multiplied by our phi vector, which is here on the side. We, the phi vector basically is what we end up getting. We end up we're ending up with potentials for each point. Okay, so um, now let's see for a. We're gonna put our scanner again. We're gonna go over this entire area using the scanner in whatever order we want, but since we ordered the phi vector as follows, we have to go A, B, C, D, E. So A, B, C, D, E, F, okay. So this is, if we look at A, we have um, the things that will actually matter here is side A, C, and D, since on B there is nothing. Um, so basically the effective conductivity between these two is this. We use the formula shown here and one and one, the effective conductivity is gonna be one. Now for C, again, one and one, effective conductivity is one. So um, this is what we have. Now for D, the effective conductivity is gonna be um, two thirds, it just so happens. Um, and because we have squares here, if you remember in the formula for the 
A, B, C, D, we have to multiply by delta X over delta Y or the opposite. If we have squares, it basically equals one. So all we care about is the effective conductivity. We can um, calculate E from that. And that's all we need for this one cell. Awesome, now we go and continue and we do the same process for B. Now in B, the only thing that really matters here, that only changes from A to B, is that on the right side, we have a value since, let's remember, oops, from beforehand, um, this is what the equation looks like. Beforehand, we had zero charge because there's nothing here. The only place, uh, sorry, zero current, the only place where you have current is here and here. So only for B you would actually have a value here. So it's negative one, negative, negative one is plus one. So this is why we do this. Um, we solve all the values for all sides, great. Now, the thing is we put it in a matrix and this matrix basically represents all of the equations we had from before. E, like if we look at the first row, EA will multiply phi A, CA will multiply phi C, etc., etc. Um, if we were to write out all of the equations, we would see that this is obviously the way to organize the matrix. Um, now we want to change the obviously the letters by the actual values, so let's do so and multiply by the phi vector that equals the I vector. Uh, or minus i vector. So now we have a, a system that we can solve using a calculator or whatever. Um, and if we solve it, these are the values that we get. So we wrote them in here. Now we can take the negatives and put them in here. That's it. We're done.